Hello everyone, this is Abhinash and welcome to Mortal Universe. In this lecture, we'll see about... Rotating anode X-ray tube. Now let's get started. First, let me tell about the short history about rotating anode X-ray tube. Philips of Holland was first produced the commercially available rotating anode X-ray tube in 1929. And at last in 1950s, the tube gets upgraded and it becomes the standard tube design for diagnostic work. This X-ray tube is made up of four major components and that is glass envelope, cathode, anode and the stator. First we will see about the glass envelope. This glass envelope is made up of pyrex glass. The reason for using pyrex glass is it can withstand high temperature without breaking down. And the thickness of this pyrex glass is 4.8 mm thickness. Now we will see about the cathode. Cathode is a negative side of this X-ray tube. And this cathode is made up of two major components and that is the filaments and focusing cup. First let me tell about the filament. This filament is made up of thoriated tungsten. The reason for adding thorium is to reduce the work function and the reason for using tungsten is due to high atomic number to increase the emission of thermions and it has a high melting point that is 3370 degrees celsius so that these filaments can withstand high heat. There are two types of filament that is dual focus filament. One is large focus and another is small focus. The large focus filament is used to take the large body parts like chest, abdomen, etc. And the small focus filament is used to take a small parts like hand, elbow, etc. Now let me tell the constructions of the filament. The thickness of the wire filament measures 0.1 to 0.2 mm thickness and the coil of the filament measures 1 to 2 mm width and the length of the large focus filament measures 15 mm long and the length of the small focus filament measures 10 mm long. And this is about the filament. Now let's see the focusing cup. Focusing cup is made up of nickel or molybdenum. And the two filaments are embedded in the focusing cup. Here for focusing cup, separate high negative voltage is supplied. The reason is to repel and converge the filament electron to the focal spot of the target or anode. If there is no focusing cup, all filament electrons diverge and fall on the anode. So some amount of electrons only interact with the anode. So only few amount of X-ray will be produced and the rest of the filament electrons are wasted. So to overcome this problem, we use a focusing cup and that's it about the cathode. Next, we will see about the constructions of the rotating anode. Now we'll see about the anode. And this rotating anode is made up of uh, tungsten disc and this tungsten disc is fixed to the shaft and shaft is fixed to the rotor and this rotor and the shaft fixed to the bearings and bearings uh, fixed to the support. <sighs> I think you are not really understand about what I'm trying to mean. Even me, I don't understand. <laughs> so let me do the model of this rotating anode and now let's go and make it. <laughs> it's very hard to wear the mask anyway you have to wear the mask okay uh, we have we have got the shaft and uh, search for bearings to move this shaft now let's search
Okay, now everything was finished. Now let me show those uh, parts one by one. First, we'll see about the support. Yes, this is the support and here in the support we have two bearings. Okay, for a better understanding I have uh, made the support transparent but in reality the support is uh, a metal. Okay, and now let me show the next part. Let me keep it aside and let me show the next part. And this is the rotor and here uh, this transparent part is rotor and this is molybdenum shaft. So here actually the rotor is not transparent okay it is made up of copper blocks copper blocks are fixed like this in the array circular path okay so here copper blocks are fixed like this so here what happens is when we give a current supply to the stator assume this is stator uh, when we give a current supply to the stator coil it induces the current inside the rotor and make the rotor to process like this okay but uh, this stator is not on the top of the uh, rotor it is on the top of the glass tube okay this whole component is present inside the vacuum tube and that's it we'll see the next part and this is the target disc this target disc is made up of tungsten the reason for using tungsten is because of its high atomic number that is 74 it can produce high energy x-rays and also due to its high melting point that is 3370 degrees celsius it can withstand enormous amount of heat during the interactions of the high velocity electrons with the focal track of this target okay so here uh, the focal track is this beveled edge so here the edges of the target is somewhat angled to 12 to 15 degree and the reason for this angulation is to project the x-rays perpendicular to the high velocity electrons or in simple words to project the x-rays downwards to the tube and the reason for this circular disc is to dissipate the heat quickly from the target for example if the target is small what happens is heat is not going to dissipate quickly from the target so that target will soon uh, get pitting the x-ray intensity and the energy of the x-ray is going to be reduced and tube life is also reduced soon okay because of this this disc is made this much big to dissipate the heat quickly but uh, the dissipation of the heat here is just 50 percent 50 percent of heat is only dissipated from the anode and the 50 percent of the heat is dissipated through oils so here oil is filled around the x-ray tube so that it absorbs the heat and increases the tube life of this rotating anode and now let's see the next component yes this is the screw and this screw is used to hold the target to the shaft okay and this screw is also made up of molybdenum because uh, here i forgot to say uh, here the reason for using molybdenum as a shaft because of molybdenum does not conduct heat quickly because of that this heat is not conducted through the bearings and does not increase the friction okay if the friction is increased to the bearings the speed is going to be reduced and the bearings may get weird off soon weird off means it may get cracked soon so because of this reason molybdenum is used as a shaft okay and this is the parts of the rotating anode and now let me assemble these parts and this support and the shaft molybdenum shaft is placed inside this support in between the bearings like this okay now if you rotate this shaft both the shaft and the rotor will be precise and now let me fix this target disc yes everything done and this is the anode assembly okay now let's try yes perfect like this inside the x-ray tube this anode will process and this is the mechanism of this rotating anode okay 
most of them will have a question like this that is what is the reason for making this this much large disc and making this disc to rotate like this to understand this reason let me explain a simple concept here in previous generation x-ray tube that is in stationary anode x-ray tube the anode is stationary right so assume this is the target of the stationary anode and here assume this is the cathode assume this beam is electron so here so here if the target is stationary what happens is the electron will hit at the same region for a prolonged period of time for each and every exposure the electron will hit at the same region like this So because of this the region will get pitting soon and the tube life is also going to be reduced soon so that tube should be replaced or the target should be replaced so to overcome this problem and to increase the tube life they made the anode to rotate uh, like this so for here each and every exposure the electron will get the different region of the target so the tube life is going to be increased tremendously and the pitting of anode is also reduced so here all this drag is used to produce x-rays so because of this reason the anode is made to rotate instead of stationary and this rotating anode presses at the rate of 10,000 revolution per minute due to this high speed precession there will be production of enormous amount of heat inside the bearings so to lubricate these bearings what they use is they use metallic lubricants you may have a question now then why they didn't use oil most of the bearings are lubricated with oil then why x-ray tubes are not lubricated with oil so here the reason for not using oil lubrication is if you use oil lubrication what happens is due to this high speed precision enormous amount of heat is created inside the bearing so that this oil may get vaporized and may spoil the vacuum if the vacuum is spoiled the electron emission is also reduced and the x-ray intensity is also reduced and the tube life is shortened because of this reason oil is not used as a lubricant after many experiments they found that metallic lubricants is suitable for this bearings and it does not vapor soon at the high temperature also so in conventional x-ray tubes uh, silver is used as a lubricant and due to various uh, disadvantages of these lubricants after 1950s instead of uh, silver they, they started to use tin, aluminium and indium as a lubricant for the bearings so because uh, these metals have less vapor pressure and high temperature okay after that aluminium is used widely as a lubricant for the bearings because aluminium is a soft metal right because of that it reduces the friction on the bearings and also it does not vaporize quickly now let me explain how lubricant is applied on this bearings let me take it out okay sure so here this is the normal bearing and and this is called outer rack and this is called inner rack in between these two racks balls are fixed inside this okay and here I just separated this outer uh, rack and here we have a balls stainless steel balls okay before 1950s they used stainless steel balls and after 1950s they started to use ceramic balls because due to high frictional temperature and also due to the pressure on the stainless steel balls these balls may get weird off and change its shape if the shape is changed these stainless steel bearings will not rotate properly So to reduce this problem they used ceramic because ceramic is a hard clay compound and it does not transform its shape soon and it does not wear off soon because of this reason ceramic is used as a ball inside the bearing okay here now let me explain how lubricant is applied uh, on the surface so here aluminum film is coated inside this uh, outer rag and here also aluminum film is coated inside this inner rack. When this bearing rotates, aluminum acts as a lubricant. And this is how lubricants are coated on this outer rack and the inner rack. And here this uh, support is fixed to the glass tube. Uh, and assume this is a glass tube and here this support is fixed like this. 
and support is going to be stationary and the rotor and the shaft and the target is going to be rotated like this at last uh, let me say something important that is the model which i am showing here is not an exact model of the rotating anode because in in reality the rotating anode components are not transparent like this support is not transparent and rotor is not transparent so here uh, to show the bearing and the shaft i just made this component transparent okay don't confuse with this model here the main intention of this model is to show the mechanism of this rotating anode and this is about the rotating anode x-ray tube and this rotating anode x-ray tube is used in general radiography machines, fluoroscopy machines and the computer tomography machines. And that's it about this rotating anode x-ray tube and I think this video is useful for you and if you have any doubts or feedbacks on this lecture feel free to put comments in my comment box i'll try to make it on my upcoming lectures and if you want to get my upcoming videos you can subscribe my channel and thank you